In this particular lesson, what we're going to be doing is factoring the form ax squared plus bx plus c, uh, where a is equal to 1. As we saw in the previous lesson, uh, factoring is the opposite of simplifying. So when going from a factored form into simplified form, uh, that process is called simplifying. And we looked at that in the previous lesson, where what you're doing is expanding and collecting like terms. So this particular simplified form would be 2x squared plus x minus 6x minus 3 is 2x squared minus 5x minus 3, as we can see here. Uh, doing the reverse operation, which is going from simplified form to factored form, that's called factoring. Uh, what we're going to be doing in today's lesson is factoring when a is equal to 1. In this particular case, as you can see, a is equal to 2. So we're not going to be looking at that particular type of factoring. Uh, in our first example, we're seeing here that we're being asked to factor x squared plus 4x minus 5. And we're going to check it by simplifying. In this particular case, a is equal to 1. And this is an ax squared plus bx plus c form. As you can see here, I have x squared plus 4x minus 5. To factor this, we need to create an area. Uh, what you'll see is because 5 doesn't go into 4, as we start creating this area, we're going to need to introduce zero pairs. Uh, the zero pair here that I'm going to borrow from the tile bin is one positive x tile and one negative x tile. So in this particular case, our factored form is x plus 5 and x minus 1. Uh, we could check that. So here's our factored form, x plus 5x minus 1. That is our solution. Okay. Uh, to check it, I'm just going to uh, expand the factored form. So we have x squared minus x plus 5x minus 5. So we have x squared plus 4x minus 5, which is the simplified form. There's other methods of factoring besides creating an area. Uh, one of the methods that I would call the box method looks like this. We're still using an area, but instead of using algebra tiles, we're going to be using numbers. Uh, in this particular case, uh, what we're doing is creating x squared here. We're going to create negative 5 here. And these two terms, the diagonal terms, are going to be like terms. And they're going to have to combine to be 4x. Now let me show you how we can do that. Uh, to create x squared, we can see that only x times x is x squared. So that is accomplished. Uh, to create negative 5, we have one of two options. We could either have positive 1 times negative 5 or negative 1 times positive 5. And in this particular case, uh, you'll see that we're going to have to choose, because in order to make the diagonal-like terms positive 4x, we're going to have to choose positive 5 and negative 1. Because negative 1 times positive 5 creates negative 5 as far as multiplication goes. And these two diagonals, uh, x times negative 1 is negative 1x. x times positive 5 is positive 5x and those do combine to make positive 4x. So in other words, our factors here are x minus 1 times x plus 5 does create x squared plus 4x minus 5. And you could check it the same way. A uh, third method of factoring this uh, is the simplest method of factoring ax squared plus bx plus c, but only works when a is equal to 1, is knowing that uh, these first two terms of each factor have to be x, and the last terms have to multiply to be negative 5 and add to be positive 4. The only terms that multiply to negative 5 and add to positive 4 are negative 1 and positive 5, so x minus 1 and x plus 5. As you can see, any of these methods that you choose to use for factoring ax squared plus bx plus c when a is equal to 1 equally work. Uh, in the next example, you'll probably notice, first of all, that a is not equal to 1. So you may think that this is in the wrong section. Uh, if we look carefully at 3x squared plus 12x minus 15, there's actually something there called a greatest common factor. If you see, I have 3x squareds. 
I have plus 12x and I have minus 15. The thing that you always want to do when you're factoring is to first of all identify if there's any greatest common factors. In this particular case, you can see that we have three groups of x squared plus 4x minus 5. So in other words, our first step of factoring is we have to factor out 3 from each of these, or in other words, we have three groups of x squared plus 4x minus 5. What you might notice uh, is that this trinomial inside the brackets is now in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is equal to 1. And it's actually the same trinomial that we just factored x squared plus 4x minus 5. So I'm not going to show you how to factor that again, but our completed factored form, which actually takes two steps, uh, is 3, and then this factors, this trinomial, factors 2, x minus 1, and x plus 5, as we saw. That's our final factored form. Okay, uh, We could check that. I'll check that really quickly here. Uh, first of all, if we do the binomial product, we will end up getting 3 times x squared plus 4x minus 5. And then as we simplify with the common factor, we'll get 3x squared plus 12x minus 15, which is the same as the original simplified form. Uh, so that is, sorry, I just added the x back there because I didn't include that originally. That is how we factor with the greatest common factor. It may take two steps. So our key ideas for this lesson are that factoring can be done by creating an area with algebra tiles. Uh, another method is if we fact and when we're factoring the form ax squared plus bx plus c where a is equal to 1, only works in this particular case, it will be of the form x plus r x plus s, and as you saw, where r times s is equal to c. So these two terms here have to multiply to be c, and r plus s is equal to b. And the final key idea is we always have to factor the greatest common factor first, if that is possible.